Plexers. Today we're going to attempt an Unraid install on an old 7th gen Optiplex, Dell Optiplex. It has an i5 processor in it and I've popped in a 500 gigabyte SATA SSD, Western Digital Blue, and a Western Digital Blue NVMe 500 gigabyte drive. And the system came with 16 gigabytes of memory. So the point of this Unraid install is to point back to a Synology NAS. To just use Unraid as an OS to run a Plex Docker container on and um, as an easy venue to connect to a Synology NAS. So I've set up a Synology NAS shared folder called Media PD, and I have some library sort folders here. So inside the movie library sort folder, I have three um, different movie libraries with all public domain movies. And then in the TV sort folder, I have public domain TV shows for a main TV Plex library and a Plex kids TV library. So that's the basis of the media we're going to use. So you need to have a media share already set up with a user and password associated with it. And I have that for my main Plex library and you need to create a user just for the Unraid install. And you do that in Control Panel. And you'll see I have one for my Unraid um, NUC that I'm running. And I just created a user for this test. And if I go in and edit it, um, the only permissions I've given it is to the Media PD shared folder I created and it's got read and write access. So it's pretty simple on the Synology side. You create a user for your Unraid install and you give that user permission to the media folder you're going to be using. So this is great if you already run a, a Plex server on a Synology NAS. You can just keep that Plex server up and running, get your Unraid box installed, point to the same media and create a second server and while you're working on all that, your primary server stays up and running. So the Synology end is very simple. And for today's test, I'm going to be using the same password for both my network share and to log into Unraid um, because this won't exist past this video. By the time you, you guys see it, this will be pulled down. Okay, so that's on the Synology side, that's pretty easy. On the Unraid side, you've got 30 days to try it for free before you have to purchase it. And I think it's $59 to use Unraid up to five or six hard drives. We're only using two drives. We're going to set up a shared cache pool just for Docker containers. And basically, you follow this getting started guide to create your um, bootable Unraid flash drive. Um, you want to use a quality flash drive, they recommend not using SanDisk drives. I just grabbed a 16 gigabyte flash drive I had in my drawer. Um, it's got to be FAT32 formatted. Um, and most of you will use Windows, so go into Windows, download the, the Unraid um, installer and just get yourself installed and, and this would be the manual install method so you you take the fat 32 file system on the flash drive the volume label has to be unraid all caps you go to the download page download a little file and if you're using Windows, you just run that file, point to your flash drive, and make your bootable um, flash drive, and you're all set. So then you, you go into the computer, and you change the um, 
um, CMOS or the BIOS to boot from the flash drive. Let me see if I can pull that up. Now, because I don't have a video capture device, I can't do it on the actual device um, I'm using. But through the help of Google Photos, I took a few pictures. So this is the little um, Optiplex. I put the NVMe in. And let's see, where am I? I just screwed this up. And then I popped my SATA SSD back over it. And below the fan, the two little tabs are removed right here. You just squeeze those, pop the fan over to the side. It's still plugged in and you can access your memory. So then in the um, BIOS, I had the flash drive plugged in, of course, the boot one, and I just selected it as the only boot device and you can use UEFI, that's fine. Matter of fact, the, the installer under Windows will ask you if you want to enable that, and so you should choose yes. Um, and then the default login is just root, no password. And once you do that, you're just logged in. And then you can go to any other computer that you're comfortable using to um, work on this headless. You don't have to work on it on the device. So you can get that device set up any place out of the way and use your regular computer to set things up and access it which is where we are right now. So I checked my um, router settings to see what local IP address this system was using. And then basically all you need to do is paste in this URL. I got carried away. So if I get rid of this and just hit home and then pasted this URL in, well, I guess I didn't paste it too well. So there's not a lot of scripting to my videos. I kind of wing it and I figure if I get stuck someplace, you're most likely to get stuck in similar areas. And if you watch me fumble through getting unstuck, it should give you the confidence you can do the same thing. All right, so this is our setup screen. I need to pick a password and I'm just going to again use this test unraid one two three four as my password. Not going to save it. So this is where you purchase a key, um, redeem an activation code or start a trial. And what's very important is don't buy Unraid until you're sure you want to use it because you might be you might test it out on a cheap flash drive but i would recommend buying a quality samsung small flash drive i use a 32 gigabyte fit they recommend not using anything larger than 32 gigabytes um, and then just any brand name secondary flash drive um, around the 128 gigabyte size range We'll use that as our one required storage array. Unraid won't start without, without one storage device and it doesn't have to be a hard drive. So I'm just going to click start trial and I'll have 30 days. And you, you can see that I, well before it disappeared, it was 24 minutes ago where I um, booted this up for the first time. So I'm just going to install the plugin. And this interface is how you'll see everything update. Um, and nothing really has a big button that says done or finished. You just kind of wait until the text tells you you're all set. Okay, so let's go to the dashboard. And you'll see that the um, CPU in this Dell is an i5-7500 at 
3.4 gigahertz. It only has 16 gigabytes of RAM. On my personal one, I have it set up with 32 gigabytes. And this allows me to um, transcode to RAM. And the array stopped because there's nothing, there's nothing set up yet. So I do show both drives here um, with a temperature and this was the flash drive. So let's start by going to main. And let's see if I can remember how to do this. Let's add a pool. We'll call it two slots. We'll make it two slots. We'll choose add. And we'll assign each of the devices. Okay, so now we need to assign one disk and this general U disk, not my Kingston, will be my storage. And remember I said 128 gigabytes. I don't have a spare one. I just have a, a no-name flash drive. For, so we're going to see if a 16 gigabyte works for storage. And I think that's all. We can try to start it. And success. Unraid has now started with these drives being active. Um, so there's no file system here, so I think that's what we'll get into next. And let me see how I do that. All right, so I'm trying not to stop the video. I'm just trying to think on my feet here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to dashboard. And where it says cache here, click the little gear. And let's see what we can do. All right, you're gonna to have to stop the video and figure this out and I'll be back. I found what we wanna do. So go back to the main tab, drop down, and we're told it's unmodelable disk presence. So I'm going to click this format, choose yes, and then click format. And we'll wait for it to happen. Okay, so that finished. It used the BTRF file system for the cache. And on, on the cache pool and our general um, storage device that's not going to be used is XFS. So that doesn't really matter. 
So we got through that hurdle. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install a few things. So let's go to apps. And I had to backtrack, so when you first install something, you're going to be prompted to install community applications. It's already installed here. So let's install a few things. Let's install CPU No, nope, that's not what I want. What do I want? I meant to type GPU while I was saying CPU. So we want the stats on the GPU. So we'll click install. And then we also want to install Intel GPU top. And unassigned devices. And we'll come back here later on to install the Plex container file. So because I'm not as patient as I might be normally, just go back to the installed apps and make sure everything's installed. So I'm missing the GPU one, so I'll do that again. No, I'm sorry. What am I missing? Yeah, the, I'm missing this. And it didn't install because I should have done the Intel GPU top first. So I was out of order there. Sorry, guys. All right, so now we have everything we need to go to the next step. This, this, and that. So let's go back to main and let's add our Synology share. Um, which is already added because I had to edit things. So let me see if I can get rid of it. Okay, so I've, I've paused this video a couple times and I cut something out, out. So let's go to our scratch pad that I've got made up here. Here's my Synology um, Unraid password, Unraid user password, and here's the username, test Unraid1234. So I'm going to add in my share from the Synology NAS. And for some reason, if I click the Windows one, it just works better, the Windows icon versus the Linux. I'm going to search for the server, and this will take a little bit. I thought I could do this video one shot, but it was about five months ago I set all this up for myself on a Intel NUC and I've forgotten too much of it. So now that it found my server, I'll click next. And now I will type in my username, test, I'm sorry, username is unraid test, hit next. 
paste in my password, which is simply test unraid1234. I don't need to remember it. We'll click next. I'll load the shares and I'll go down and the only one I actually have access to is the media PD and I'll click done. That's successful and now this is the step I missed and why I had to come back and redo it. I need to mount this. And then go into settings and click auto mount and done. Then click on the hyperlink and if you see your libraries, your media on your NAS, you know you're successful. So now let's go into settings. Oh, I don't think I can do this. If I do GPU stats, I can't pick Intel yet until I create the Docker container. Okay. Um, but it is a good reminder to change this to Fahrenheit right now. Then if I go back to dashboard, there's other places to, let me see, where am I looking? Is it main? Yeah, there's another setting someplace. I'm not going to dig for it. But if you're in the U.S., you can change the temperature of your drives to Fahrenheit also. I'm not going to dig for that setting. So let's go back to, um, well, no, let's, let's stay here for a second. So I've got a scratch pad set up. Um, this is important. I actually click in here and copy this and put it on your own scratch pad. So let's go into, well, I'm already here. So put this on your scratch pad and then add your libraries with, with your um, forward slash your actual library name. So you'll see I've got TV-libraries, movie-libraries, and music. You'll want these on a scratch pad already set up. And also, from the description of this video, throw this on a scratch pad. Um, I'm sorry, not this. Throw this on a scratch pad. If you've got 32 gigabytes of RAM or more, use the whole thing. If you've only got 16 gigabytes or less, only use this. We'll need this info to set up our container. So I don't really need that, but this, this is what I need and this is, is what we'll use to start Plex with. Alrighty, so let's go back to apps. Before we install the Plex container, let's also install a file manager. And then let's do our Plex container. Okay, the install takes us to the setup. And we're going to use the cheat sheet here. So let's turn on advanced view and show more settings. And in this line here, if you have 32 gigs of RAM or more, you can paste in this whole line. If you only have 16 gigs, just paste in this line. 
This line enables hardware acceleration. This line, and specifically this part, uses 16 out of your total amount of 16 gigabytes of your total amount of RAM for um, RAM transcoding. Um, so we're just not going to use that in this system because I only have 8 gigabytes. So we'll paste that in there. And now we need the path for our TV show library. Same for the movie. And we want to change the user to cache to point this to our cache pool for the container. And then my Synology NAS, the PGID number is 100, and it may be that for many people, but you need to find that out. And the best place to do that is the Marius Hosting website. He's got a lot of Docker guides for Synology NASes. And let's see if I can do... a little search here. PUID. Well, let's let's just jump into one of one of his tutorials because lots of times he'll tell how to get this. Okay, so this is his guide on how to create a scheduled task to get that information. So that, that's something you should probably run on your Synology NAS before you proceed. But like I said, mine is 100, so I'm, I'm set with that. All right, so we have our movie and the TV path. Now we need to add a path for our music. I'm going to copy this. And paste it into the container path. And then let me just double check that I don't mess this up. All right, I did. I want this in the host path. And the name will be path colon space slash music. container path will be just slash music and I think that's all we need let me hit add and let's build our container All right, the command finished successfully. So we can click done. 
and let's click into Docker. And this is what we want to see. We want to see a volume mapping for all three of the library types we're going to have. Now, if you have a photo library or if you have an other video library, you would stop the container. Click the icon, go into Edit, click, click Advanced View, show more settings, and you would recreate Let's see, where are we? You would recreate this setup for your um, other video or your photo Plex folders on your Synology NAS. I don't have any of that set up, so I'm not going to do that. All right, so we're back to Docker. We'll start the container. I could start all. I could click the icon and I could click start. And as long as you see all your paths here, and you definitely want to make sure that the config is going to the cache. This is where everything's built. Motion detected. So the reason I installed the file manager was now I can go back to main and I can click this icon and I can come into the app data folder and I can see the Plex folder. And if I wanted to start fresh, I could stop the container, um, remove it, and I could click this, and I could click delete, and get rid of that container completely and start fresh. So I'm going to pause the video, and I'll come back, and we'll get into building. Um, well, we'll do a few more settings here, and then we'll get into installing our Plex libraries. I'm sorry, before we get into Plex, let's do a couple things first. Let's um, enable the GPU. So hopefully you'll see this under Dashboard, under GPU. And if you click the gear, the top line unit ID, you can click into it and see the um, iGPU of your processor. Mine is the HD Graphics 630 because it's a 7th gen Intel i5. If it was an 8th gen, it would be a UHD. And if I hit Apply, and now if I go back to Dashboard, you'll see I have all this information that will be loaded if we're transcoding a stream through the iGPU. And we'll do that at the end of the video. And then also go to Settings. Well, Let's go back to main for a second. Let's fix these temps for our, our SSDs. Go into settings and then display settings. And where are we here? Change Celsius to Fahrenheit. If you're in the US, hit apply. Go back to main and you'll see your temperatures of your drives in Fahrenheit now. All right, so we should be all set. We've got our Docker container running and all the paths are mapped. So let me just start fresh. And find my cheat sheet. So you're going to use this formula, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of your new little Unraid server colon 32400 web. So I'm going to copy that, paste it into the URL. And we're at the Howplex work screen. So I'm going to name this server Unraid Sino Test, or I could just 
change it to whatever I want. It picked up the name that was already used um, for Unraid. So I'll modify it a little bit. If I leave this checked, I'm not going to have remote access. Um, and maybe we'll fix that at the end of the video. My um, TP-Link router has UPnP turned off and I would have to manually port forward a port for this install, which isn't hard to do. And I have a port forwarding tutorial video. So we'll quickly add a bunch of videos and we'll use the um, I use the Plex app on my NVIDIA Shield sitting right next to me to start some streams and I'll show you the hardware transcoding on it. So let's add the movie libraries. I've got three to add. Browse for the media and now you will see movies, music, and TV shows off to the right as paths. All right, so I'm going to add my main movie library that has these public domain videos. And before I click add, I'm going to go into the advanced section and I'm going to uncheck prefer artwork based, I'm sorry, I'm going to uncheck use local assets and I want to have collections created automatically if I have two or more movies that are in a collection. So Plex is doing its thing. Let's keep adding libraries. Same thing, browse for the media, find the movie library. And kids, add, advanced, uncheck use local assets. I want everything pulled from Plex because my naming conventions are great. And the same collection um, number of two for automatic collections. Let's add the last movie library. We'll just call that documentaries. Only one movie in that. Again, we'll adjust this, uncheck use local assets, fix our collection size. Now we're doing the TV show libraries. This will be my main one. You'll see I've got some episodes from three shows. They're all public domain again. And here, this is what I do. I use FileBot to name from TVDB and not TMDB for many reasons. So I'm going to change episode ordering to the TVDB. The TVDB has some things that the movie database doesn't have. Um, it's got an optional DVD ordering from the preferred or from the normal aired ordering. There's no DVD ordering at the movie database. And TVDB also creates virtual TV shows to get content in as a TV show that's not listed at um, the movie database. For example, Looney Tunes, um, old Disney animated shorts, um, Tom and Jerry cartoons from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. They weren't really a TV show, but you can add all those shorts as a TV show. One that works for me is a virtual Ken Burns films listing. Otherwise, I'd have to have all his documentaries as individual documentaries as they're listed at both TMDB and TVDB. And instead, I can list them under the virtual Ken Burns films and enter it that way. So I don't use TMDB for my series libraries at all. So make that change, uncheck use local assets. Let's add our kids TV show library. We'll 
browse to the TV show, TV show kids, advanced settings, episode ordering to the TVDB, and uncheck use local assets. And now we just have a movie or a music library left. Music main. And I don't have much, but this is all public domain or free free music. And I don't think there's anything you need to change under the advanced settings for a music library. So let's do next and we're done. So I am into my full server setup with all my different servers. The Unraid Sino is selected. This is my main server. My friends and family are connected. This is the Unraid one I did on the 11th gen Intel NUC. I've got um, my son and somebody else on that. Once I get all my collections set up over the winter, I'll move everybody to it and I'll shut down the Synology NAS server on the DS1522. And I still have the original Plex server spun up with nobody accessing it on the DS1019. So there's no remote access on that. Let's see if we can get to that in a minute. But if I go to libraries, I can click in and everything was discovered perfectly fine. So let me start my shield up and I'm going to use the only 4K movie I have is this Big Buck Bunny and I'm going to play that and we'll transcode it for you so you can see what's going on. I had to wake my shield up. Entering Plex now. Sliding down to more. And going into the Unraid Sino server to movies. I'm muting the shield. And I'm going to play the 4K stream. So you'll see up here this change under dashboard. Well, I guess. I guess I may not know what I have there. Let's go in and look through Unraid. I'm sorry, not into the container. Let's look here, back to the Synology NAS. All right, so I simply didn't select which one I wanted to start. So the 720p started automatically. So let me go back and play version. And I have two different 4K ones, both at 10 megabits per second, 10.5 and 10.8. So I started the 10.5. All right, so it's still detecting some um, intros. And it didn't play the one version, let's try the other. Okay, so that's going. Let's look at dashboard. Alright, so it's transcoding it. It's not playing it directly. 
Oh, I see. It's AV1. The IGPU in um, this 7th gen Dell computer is not going to handle an AV1 transcode. But it, I wanted to force a transcode anyway to show you the dashboard. And all the transcoding is happening on the CPU and not the GPU because the IGPU can't handle this. So that wasn't a good choice to use. Let's let's use a regular video. Yeah, I don't have a public domain 4K H265 or HEVC video to use. So let me start this up. And if we go back to the Unraid server, we're playing. The processor is being used a little bit. And nothing is going on with the GPU. So if we go back here and I transcode this video to 720p, all right, you'll see that the transcode started. It's not playing yet, it's buffering. So now it's playing. If we go back to Unraid, now we got something going on because my transcodes are going into the CPU and not the IGPU. So we don't have hardware accelerated transcoding going. Well, let me stop this video and figure out why, and I'll be back. Rookie mistake, um, even though I've got the hardware acceleration all set in Unraid, I haven't enabled it on this server, which, again, is a rookie mistake. Well, only that I do. Well, I picked it specifically, and I, ch oh, I need to cl click that. Use hardware acceleration when available, and then it auto should still work. Okay, so let's go back to our dashboard. And Plex is still working in the background detecting intros on the TV shows. So let me start with a 1080p H265 video. All right, so I started up direct playing and let me enable um, a transcode. All right, spun for a little bit and it started up on my end. Let's wait for the um, dashboard to, oh, it already did. So now we're at 480p and we see the HW for a hardware transcode. And if we go to Unraid, we now see activity under the GPU section. So the processor is working because it's detecting intros in the background. And I can't stop that, but hopefully it won't run too long. So I may, I may stop the video and come back and do another test just so you can see that this all settles down once the intros are, are done being detected. 
but the GPU is being used right now and Unraid will show that. So let's go back into Plex um, and let's try that big buck bunny again and see what will happen. Make sure I play the right version of it. And I'm going to try the 10.5 megabit per second 4K version. And that's spinning on my end. I don't really remember the media characteristics. Okay, so this is a H.264 um, 4K version, and it's it's transcoding to 4K H.264. So it is playing. If we go back to Unraid, it's using the GPU, the iGPU. And let's see how a force transcode to 720p does. 4 megabits per second. Spinning on my shield. Dashboard has reflected the change, but it hasn't started yet. All right, so it started. So just imagine how this might perform with an 11th gen Intel CPU. I love the Iris XE graphics. All right, so it took a little bit, but it's playing. And if we go back to Unraid, we'll see the GPU is active doing the transcode. But it's buffering on my end. Let's play original quality and then back onto the stream and we'll try the other 4K version. And this is the AV1, I believe. Okay. So that's being transcoded to H.264 also. And it looks like the, I'm going to stop the stream. It looks like the processor gets pegged too, trying to do that one. All right, let's just um, check something from the TV show library. Alright, so this is an Unraid server pointing back to a Synology NAS on, on a very old, in my opinion, device. A 7th gen Intel processor. I'd really go with something more modern, but it'll work. Um, and at least it's better. It's a better iGPU than what's in my Synology DS1520 as long as you get the 8th gen, 9th or 10th gen processor, and 11th gen um, will be a killer machine. And let me, let me pause this again and we'll see if we can get the um, remote access going for this so you don't have to reference that video. For the final part of the video for the remote access, I have a Linux utility um, yeah, somebody said I didn't give the greatest advice for something. I have a Linux utility that allows me to display my phone screen on my computer screen, but it won't work while I'm screen recording. So let's go into remote access, and I'll have to 
end up blurring my public IP out of this section of the video. But I went into the settings of my TP-Link router, it's a Deco X60 on my phone, and I reserved um, this IP address, and I manually forwarded this port to 31400. So all you have to do is check this. Let's change that to 31400 and hit retry. This should take about 60 to 90 seconds. And lock and remote access. Okay, so we're fully accessible outside the network. And Plex is done scanning now. And I just want to show something. Um, let's go back to my shield. And I'll play the 4K version. That is the, um, the default 720p. That starts right up. Um, I'll go to play version and we'll play the 4K one that we know is H264. I just wanted to show that it really didn't change things too much when all the background tasks were complete that were on the CPU. So you'll see Plex is saying we're only using 20% of the CPU for this stream. Um, it looks more intensive from the Unraid display and it is transcoding. But we know it's transcoding because it says so here and it says it's hardware. So let's just force a 720p transcode. 720p, 4 megabits per second. So it's buffering on my screen. Now it's buffering on the dashboard display. So really, we're going to have about the same performance, even though those background tasks aren't running on the CPU. So this will make an adequate Plex server, a 7th gen processor with this iGPU. But you, you really want something more modern to handle 4K the way you want to. Now, did this take a long time? It's playing now, now it just buffered a little bit, now it's playing. You really want something more modern to transcode 4K, but the whole idea is to not transcode 4K in the first place. Um, and it just is what it is, what it is. And this may not be the best test quality material because generally my 4K stuff directs streams, but I didn't have any public domain stuff to find um, to use as this, this example. So that's, that's my little Unraid install. Um, it works great off my NUC. And I might as well go into that for a comparison before I end the video. The video is already long enough. But let me just show you what an 11th gen processor does. I'm looking for my highest bit rated movie, and I've shown this before. All right, so I just started it up, and let's go to this. So this is 104 megabits per second. It's an H, um, EVC, which is H265. And it's direct playing. So if I force a transcode, let's see, I clicked the wrong button. I'm into chapter selection and I don't want to be. My, my shield's being funny. Let's resume it again. All right, and let's convert it now to 720p, 4 megabits per second. Spinning a little bit, started right up. 
and you'll just see what that Iris XC iGPU can do. It's just a fabulous um, iGPU. If I want to transcode it even lower, which why would you want to do that, right? But let's go to 480p, 1.5 megabits per second. Okay, so it started up on my end, and now you see it switch to SD. So that 11th gen processor is just fantastic. All right, so I can end the video. Let me blur out my IP address, and I'll try to get all this on Facebook today. Thanks for watching this long, extended video. And I know I ramble. I know I, I this wasn't smooth, but it's hard to script a video like this instead of just doing it. Thanks for watching.